Coming up on this edition of Bearcat Student Media News, the Huntsville City Manager was locked out of a public building. Find out why and if it was on purpose. Also, find out how and why a group chat circulated around campus, leading police to make a statement about it. Live from the Dan Rather Communications Building on the campus of Sam Houston State University, this is Channel 7 News. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Justin Hardcastle. Welcome to Bearcat Student Media News. A recent chat message circulated among Sam Houston State students saying that African American students would be the targets of violence. Bearcat Student Media's Taj Bailey talked with some black students on campus and got their reactions to the threats. This past weekend, university police have been made aware of alleged incidents of discrimination both on and off campus. The University Police Department, along with Huntsville Police, are investigating the alleged incidents. A group chat message claimed an African-American girl had water thrown on her by a group of white people. The message did not say where the alleged incident took place. Many students shared their thoughts on how uncomfortable this incident made them feel. You know, with me being African-American myself, you know, it kind of gives me, you know, an, like an unwanted feeling. And I feel like, you know, kids, future kids, freshmen is incoming, you know, in my situation, they're going to feel like, oh, well, you know, what if, like, something like that happened to them? Because I did hear about, it was like a girl that got water that, uh, like, thrown on her. Me and my friends, we, we did plan on going out that night, and it was just uncomfortable. Well, I think it's like an uncomfortable thought that something like that could even go on, or people could even, like, threaten or say something like that. So, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a good thing to hear about it if you're a prospect looking at this school. Other students like Xavier and Randall speculated on how situations like this can affect the future enrollment at SAM. You know, it might affect you know, a black person coming here versus going somewhere else to HBCU. You know, we want everybody to be here. Be going out too, I could be a victim. The message went on to say the girl who allegedly had water thrown on her claimed the group of white people were going to kill all the black students at SAM, starting with people living at Midtown. Bearcat student media cannot confirm the alleged incident took place, nor do we know the identity of the girl making the claims. We reached out to campus police for comment, but they haven't gotten back to us. They did share this statement on Facebook. The University Police Department has been made aware of potential discrimination against students on campus. The university takes these issues seriously and is monitoring the situation. On the campus of Sam Houston State, I'm Taj Bailey with Bearcat Student Media. President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness plan is still in the works and is estimated to total out at about $400 billion across all 50 states. The forgiveness plan has a lot of people excited across the country while others are concerned what it might mean for the economy. Texas has been shown to be one of the states that rejects the idea of student loan forgiveness, but according to the Houston Chronicle, more than 3.3 million Texans would benefit from the plan. The student loan forgiveness program would benefit the same amount of Texans as most other states put together, only being second to California, which has more than 3.5 million people who are eligible for student loan forgiveness. The Huntsville Public Library will not have displays celebrating Banned Books Week this year for the first time in more than a decade, and it's creating some controversy. We turn to Bearcat Student Media's Michelle Fitzgerald, who's following the story. Huntsville City officials ordered the Public Library to take down all Banned Books Week displays, including a banner that read, Read with Pride, and books highlighting LGBTQ stories. This after an anonymous flyer circulated on August 31st called for the removal of the quote, shameful display. Yeah, the American Library Association started Banned Books Week back in 1982 as a response to a rash of banned and challenged books across not only the United States, but across the world. According to the Huntsville item, city manager Aaron Colhaby said, the library was closed on Wednesday until all displays were removed. Moving any displays is, is problematic for me, actually. It doesn't matter what the content is, but this seems to be a personal attack. The Huntsville item reported Colhaby said, the action is not directed at any specific content, and all displays are suspended until the city reviews its policies, adding the city has not banned any books at its public library. Personally, I feel as though that is a violation of our First Amendment rights. That's like telling someone that they are guilty until proven innocent. 
The flyer targeted LGBTQ plus books, adding library employees had no intention of willingly taking the displays down by locking the doors at 10 a.m. It remained closed until city officials enforced the removal of displays in the early afternoon. We've been doing it here for about 12 years, uh, having a big uh, Band Books Week display, so we kind of celebrate it here in our own way. You know, kind of displays for everyone, trying to highlight different books uh, for specific groups. Many local residents spoke out online in support of the library's displays, though several residents agreed with the city's decision, saying, quote, sexual displays are inappropriate. I think that it is a travesty and honestly just something that shouldn't have happened for them to come and take this down. It was, it, it's important to share ideas no matter the perspective. And it, it's, it's scary. It uh, points to a very big problem, I think, in the United States. Nonprofit LGBTQ plus organization Huntsville, Texas Pride strongly condemned the city's actions, calling it discrimination and censorship. They organized several protests outside City Hall, detailed on its website. Library Services Specialist Brenda Collins said the staff is not authorized to make any statements. When we reached out to the city for comment, City Manager Executive Assistant Mary Joyner said she could not locate Cole Habe's press release, and she said he would contact Bearcat Student Media next week. Reporting from Huntsville, Michelle Fitzgerald, Bearcat Student Media. Fall enrollment remained flat at Sam Houston State University, but there is some good news. According to President Alyssa White, the university saw the largest freshman enrollment in the school's history. As of August 30th, more than 3,400 freshmen have enrolled, a 15% increase compared to the fall of 2021. White says school officials are excited to see so many freshmen choosing Sam Houston State for the next stage of their academic journey. Overall, enrollment remains steady at about 22,000 students attending SHSU. One of the three caucuses created by the Center for Diversity and Intercultural Affairs recently held its first meeting. Bearcat student media Sydney Ferguson has more on how SHSU's African American students are coming together to start the semester off right. The African American Black Student Caucus met for the first time this fall. Kaziah Frederick leads these meetings. She's the African American Black Student Services Coordinator and her intent is to bring students of color together. The purpose is to create a place for black students to come and voice their concerns or anything they like would like to see in the black community. Frederick's position was created last semester by the Center for Diversity and Intercultural Affairs. She says students can join simply by showing up to meetings. You keep coming and you get involved in some of the activities um, or plannings that we have. With more members, the caucus hopes to build three committees. One will be responsible for executing its Black Excellence Ceremony. The caucus plans the Black Excellence Ceremony, which is held every semester. And that is a time for Black students to be celebrated in their graduation and just to um, honor their heritage. The caucus is also in need of their own staple event, comparable to the Hispanic Latin Caucus's Latin Night and the Lavender Caucus's Drag Show. In addition to its planned events, students stand to benefit from involvement in the caucus in other ways. They not only get to interact with other students, but they have access to pro staff members and organizations outside of this campus. Um, volunteer hours. For students on the fence about joining, Frederick has the following um, message. This is just a great place where you can, you'll always be welcomed and you'll just get the opportunity to help improve the black experience here at SAM. Because I mean, there's always work that can be done and you can be one of those people that help get it done. On the campus of Sam Houston State University, Sydney Ferguson, Bearcat Student Media. Coming up, will this be the last football game against our northern rivals? We get student reaction right after the break. I don't remember how it started. Today. Our back and forth. It always came back. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. If I could go back and change it all, I would. 
to think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back. I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Sam Houston State Residence Life has opened Resident Advisor, or RA, applications for students this upcoming spring semester. Students can apply to be an RA in the dorms through Handshake, or you can receive a QR code from a flyer in the residential halls. RA Madison Sider tells us that being an RA could improve your student experience in different ways. It's just a short little essay, and then you get, you've got to turn in, you know, like your resume and stuff like that. But during the interviews, you'll do like an individual interview, and then you have a group interview where there's three activities. It's actually RAs and RHDs that interview you so that they can figure out what teams you're going to work best on and stuff like that. RA applications are due on Monday, October 3rd at 11.55 p.m. on Handshake. Students interested in applying who, or who may have questions can reach out to their RA or a resident life staff member for more information. The Plant and Soil Science Club continues to blossom another semester here at Sam Houston State University. In the heart of SHSU, and the Plant and Soil Science Club has released dates for its upcoming meetings in the yard. The club has set up an event tent to purchase plants in order to fundraise for its upcoming meetings and events. Starting on October 11th, you'll be able to join the club and get involved in some fun activities including competitions, expos, service projects, and seed planting parties. These meetings take place at 6 p.m. at the Horticulture Center. You can join its Facebook group for more upcoming meeting dates. This Saturday will be the 96th annual Battle of the Piney Woods and it could very well be the last for Sam Houston State as we move on to FBS football next year. With the rivalry looking like it's coming to an end, Bearcat Student Media's Christian Cortez got student reaction to the move. Trapper panel in short yardage. Handle fakes the handoff. Last year's Battle of the Piney Woods ended in a comeback win for the Bearcats as they won their 10th straight game against the Lumberjacks of Stephen F. Austin. The annual game takes place at NRG Stadium in Houston, and as Sam Houston goes for win number 11 in a row, it could be their last against their neighbors to the north for a long time. Um, it's a bit of a bittersweet moment, I gotta say. Um, love the matchup every year, seeing Sam Houston going up against Stephen F. Austin. Um, but it's all for a bigger picture. Uh, Sam Houston moving to the FBS level to Conference USA uh, next year. And, you know, bittersweet, but one last ride, you know. Students, staff, faculty, and alumni have enjoyed the rivalry over the years. Many are not ready for it to be over, but are excited to be a part of the final game. I mean, well, you know, I'm really excited. I'm really, really sad that it's the last one. But you know, as an asset, the last one, it's going to be probably, hopefully, the best one. So I'm excited to go, have fun, tailgate, all that. So, um, you know, like, uh, all my friends are going, most people know are going, so it's going to be fun to be so many people there. And, you know, it's going to be a good time. Many will tell you for both schools, it's unfortunate this Saturday will likely be the final battle of the Piney Woods. But one student told us off camera, I want to see us win more. I love seeing FFA movies. I think she speaks for all Bearcats. On the campus of Sam Houston State University, Christian Cortez, Bearcat Student Media. We'll have more on the Battle of the Piney Woods later in sports. A Sam alum paid a visit to campus this week, but it was all business, so to speak. KHOU anchor Mia Gradney came to campus Tuesday to do a story about the university achieving the designation as a Hispanic-serving university. Gradney and Black here interviewed school leaders as well as students on campus to get their reactions to the university's new status. One of the interviewees was SHSU's Chief Diversity Officer Janine Bias, seen here in red. The piece is set to air on KHOU on Thursday on the 5 o'clock news. Still ahead, a notable Huntsville venue underwent a name change and it got a whole lot longer. Details coming up. We'll continue to be warm and sunny through the weekend through your Battle of Piney Woods weekend to be exact. I'm forecaster Rodrigo Mendoza and we'll have your full weather picture after the break.
three, two, one. The black truck? Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Oh, is it overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. Good afternoon, Huntsville and Sam Houston State University students. I'm Rodrigo Mendoza with your local forecast. It's currently 86 degrees in Huntsville with sunny skies throughout the day with humidity at 22% uh, percent winds at 5 miles an hour out of the east. It feels like temperatures of 85 degrees. Around the region, Centerville's at 88 degrees. Groveton is now at 87. Livingston checking in at 88. College Station also at 88, while Magnolia, Conroe, 86. And finally, Hardin also checking in at 88. Statewide, El Paso seeing a temperature of 85 degrees with cloudy skies in Lubbock, 88, while Dallas checking in at 90 degrees, and in Brownsville, it's a little bit warmer at 89. Around the nation, a cool 69 degrees in New York, a brisk 58 in Chicago, and 50, 85, excuse me, down in Miami. Denver is warmer at 83 degrees, and lastly, LA at 89. For tomorrow, we'll wake up to temperatures of 60 degrees in Huntsville. Sunrise will be at around 7.14 a.m. with bright and sunny skies. Winds from the northeast will come in at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Humidity will be sitting at slightly high at 36%. And that five-day forecast for Huntsville tomorrow, the high with is 86 with a low of 54. Friday has a high of 84 with a low of 53. Saturday start for that battle of the Piney Woods game. 86 degrees, uh, Sunday sitting at 89 in mostly sunny skies, and then Monday has a high of 90 with a low of 60 with no chance of rain. And that's it from the Bearcat Student Media Weather Center. I'm Rodrigo Mendoza. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for that weather update, Rodrigo. Many Sam Houston State University students are excited about the new restaurant, Mr. Beast Burger, here on campus. Mr. Beast Burger is replacing Moe's Southwest Grill, which is located near General's Market. The new campus restaurant caught most students by surprise because many of them like Moe's. Mr. Beast Burger features various types of burgers, chicken sandwiches, and even a famous grilled cheese sandwich. The restaurant is open from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and you can order on Grubhub or in the kiosk inside. Things seem to be rolling right along at Sam Houston State this month. Last month was the grand opening of the new Smoothie and Acai Bowl Cafe, Rollin' and Bowlin'. The cafe is located next to the entrance of the Cat Club where the adult bar used to be. This is the first smoothie bar here at Sam Houston State University. We have avocado toast and all the avocados fresh and everything that we put on that is fresh as well. Um, it's one of the healthiest places on campus but, and it's just really nice and refreshing to go to. So basically Rolling and Rolling, its whole thing is like healthy vibes and just having like a nice environment. So you can come in here, you can, you know, jam out and just, you know, do your homework and get like a nice healthy snack as well that actually tastes good. Rolling and Bowling hours are 7.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. on weekdays and it is closed on weekends. Sam Houston has its hands full this weekend in Houston as they take on Stephen F. Austin in the Battle of the Piney Woods. The Lumberjacks coming off a jaw-dropping win this past weekend in Nacogdoches. I'm Bearcat Student Media sportscaster Hannah Whittington, and I'll have all your action on the field and on the court coming up after the break. The proud son of hardworking immigrant parents, Eric Rodas chose to serve his country. A father, a soldier, and now a college graduate. He proved that circumstances have nothing to do with your outcome. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Eric determine their future. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. I don't remember how it started. Not today. Our back and forth. 
it always came back. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. As a boy, Lorenzo Baeza's playground was the streets. When his grandfather suffered a heart attack, one nurse's act of kindness changed his life. Today, he is the first in his family to graduate college, and he's not done yet. He's on his way to becoming a doctor. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Lorenzo defy the odds. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Hannah Whittington with your Bearcat Student Media Sports. This Saturday, Sam Houston faces Stephen F. Austin on the football field for the 96th time. The historic battle of the Piney Woods could be coming to an end. Due to the Bearcats moving to Conference USA next year, last year's battle ended in dramatic fashion. The Bearcats came back from 14 down in the fourth quarter. SFA's kicker Chris Campos missed the game-winning field goal. This sealed the game for Sam Houston. The Bearcats are 1-2 and, and fresh off a of bye week. They hope to build after their win a couple weeks ago. Stephen F. Austin comes to Houston on the heels of a blowout win. More on that in a second. Sam Houston hopes to add to their 10-game winning streak versus SFA. The game will be at 2.30 at NRG Stadium in Houston. And speaking of SFA, as we said, they are coming off a lopsided victory against NAIA Warner University from Lake Wales, Florida. And we do mean lopsided. The Lumberjacks pulled out the chainsaws and absolutely carved up the Royals 98 to nothing. SFA scored 13 touchdowns in the first game, eight in the first half alone. For good measure, they tacked on two field goals and a safety in the romp Saturday night in Nacogdoches. Four Lumberjack quarterbacks passed for 478 yards. SFA also rushed for 121 yards. Warner managed less than 150 yards on offense and turned the ball over four times. In case you're wondering, the most points scored in a game is 105 when Portland State ran up the score against Delaware State in 1980. To the volleyball court, now where the Lady Bearcats look to get back to their winning ways. And they do just that. They ended their nine-game losing streak, defeating Stephen F. Austin in a five-set game at Bernard G. Johnson Coliseum over the weekend. The encounter marked the third win in a row for SHSU over SFA after securing two wins against them last year. Katherine Krieger held her own with 20 kills in the match. The Cats took down the Lumberjacks three games to two. The Lady Cats are looking to keep the momentum going after Saturday's win with games at Seattle U and Utah Valley this week, starting Thursday night at the Red Hawk Center in Seattle. A lot of excitement on the field and on the court in the coming weeks. I'm Hannah Whittington, and that's a wrap on sports. Thank you so much for that sports update, Hannah. The Sam Houston Memorial Museum will receive a name upgrade. On August 11th, the Texas State University System's Board of Regents met and approved a number of items during their quarterly meeting. One of the items approved was changing the Sam Houston Memorial Museum's name. It will now be called the Sam Houston Memorial Museum and Republic of Texas Presidential Library. The upgrade was made to honor Sam Houston's time as the first and third president of the Republic of Texas. It will also honor his contributions to shaping the state and recognize the unique attributions of the museum. And that'll do it for us this week at Bearcat Student Media News. I'm Justin Hardcastle, and we'll see you back here next week.